Hi, welcome everybody. Today we want to talk about this solver called Piezoform. All right, and how it differs from Icoform. Okay. All right, whatever. Icoform. Okay. So, what is Piezoform and what is Icoform? So piezo form is one of the solvers which is used for turbulent flow. Turbulent flow. However, it has also it also have an option to do laminar flow as well. So if you look online, you look at the ICO form and the piezo form. Uh, the piezo stands for pressure pressure implicit with splitting of operators. Uh, so if you're not sure what that is, don't worry. Um, there are some uh, good videos you can talk about, which talk about some of these algorithms. And the first thing you should look at is called the simple algorithm. This uh, simple algorithm in open form. And a lot of these solvers are based on uh, variations or extensions of this uh, simple algorithm. And the simple algorithm is basically for steady state. That's why there's a big S. Oh, oh no, it's not... Uh, not call the S is not called a steady state. The S stands for semi implicit. But regardless, um, if you see simple form, that's based on the simple algorithm. And this piezo form is built upon the simple algorithm. So that's why it's called piezo form. Pressure implicit with splitting of operators, which is just one way to solve the Navier Stokes equation. However, if you look at the ICO form, uh, it also uh, uses the same piezo algorithm. So, and it's a transient code. Both of them are transient codes. Piezo form and ICO form are transient codes. So, if I were to compare both of them, to put very broadly and simply, uh, ICO form just solves for laminar flow, and piezo form is sort of ICO form with the expansion pack, the extension of uh, uh, turbulent modeling. So, if I write it down like that, piezo form. So it's equals to icoform plus the turbulent stuff. That's in terms of capability. It will solve uh, the incompressible flow and it will solve the turbulent stuff as well. So wait, yeah, let's see. Okay, so this is a unsteady, unsteady state solution. All right, so, uh, I'm not wrong. Yeah, let's see. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Just to confirm, yes, piezo form is a incompressible flow solver, because you will find it in the incompressible flow directory. Now I have two uh, Ubuntu windows open, and yes, it is very possible to do with two uh, do Ubuntu with two windows open. I've just been doing one window open for no simplicity, whatever. Just the pra pragmatic issues, uh, and of course you can run one uh, one uh, operation of open form in this window, one operation of open form in another window. Uh, so you can run two cases at the same time, no problem. All right, I'm just gonna press enter both sides. Um, but of course it's gonna stress your CPU a lot. It's gonna stress your GPU if you're using a GPU for this. So this is just for demonstration purposes uh, that we want to compare icoform and piezo form. So let's take a look at well, open form. Okay, so just want to teach a new trick in this video uh, for Linux anyway. So if you want to see what files are in there, you just press the tab button, double tab button. So you'll see that when I press double tab, the tab button, T-A-B, uh, you will show this and then you can write tutorials and you tap and you press double tap again to see what's in there. So uh, tutorials are there, double tap. So it makes it much faster. Uh, so we're going to go incompressible, right? Incompressible. Double tap. And I'll go to piezo form first. And here you'll have lamina and porous blockage. So that is one of the first things, all right? In the other window, I'll do the same, except instead, why not I just copy and paste? 
uh, this and double tap and go to I go foam instead and then go to cavity double tap cavity yeah and I'll just be here all right so I forgot the CD so yeah I go foam cavity cavity So there you go. All right, let's just first do a basic comparison of the input files because uh, piece of form and ICO form, while they run on the same algorithm, they're essentially different uh, C programs or C++ programs, and they will need a different input files. So let's see the difference between the input files. So uh, well, we're already familiar with a zero file. Oopsie. You're already familiar with the zero file, right? There's just a UMP. So there's a boundary field, dimensions, and all that. Now, is this the same for piezo form? So let's see. Let's VI the U. You see that it's pretty much the same. Okay. Uh, now, of course, these cases are different, but you can see the entries are pretty much the same. You have the dimensions, you have the internal field, and you have a boundary field as well. So nothing, nothing too, uh, nothing too uh, different. Of course, uh, this is uh, they have a slightly different boundary conditions. But other than that, the way we write our code, the syntax, in other words, should be the same for these two. So let's do a quit, and let's see the p pressure, and then we'll find that it's pretty much the same as well. There are not too many different additions. The dimensions are the same. And the boundary fields, internal fields are pretty much the same as well. So let's just exit and then we'll investigate what are the differences between the laminar piezo foam and ICO foam because both pretty much do the same thing. Of course, we want to look at the, the Reynolds average uh, kind of uh, equations later, some of the turbulent models, but let's use this uh, piezo foam laminar flow as some kind of a basis. So let's go. Let's go to constant. Yep. And here, let's go to constant. All right. So let me clear both windows because it's going to get pretty crowded pretty quickly. All right. So we all have three, uh, three uh, things here. One is called turbulence properties. One is called FB options. And then we have transport properties as well. So let's look at the common one first. Transport properties, yeah. VI transport properties. Okay. So now let's take a look. We look at this thing called uh, transport properties and then we see an entry here called transport model. And it says it's a Newtonian fluid or rather it's Newtonian. So in other words, for the for the um, you know, physical properties, the transport properties uh, file, file, we will need to have this uh, other entry called transport model. Now this here is a comment, so uh, this, this is why you have a double slash uh, forward. So the open form won't read that, but you need this. Uh, you need these two entries, which says transport model and new. And here it just says new, which is again the kinematic viscosity. They are both referring to the same things, but in this in this sense, you need to have a transport model here. So other than that, there's nothing too different. So let's go through some of the other new things which you see in this folder. Let's see the turbulence properties file. Now in the turbulence properties file, there is no turbulence, so the simulation type is just laminar. So this is pretty straightforward. There's nothing, nothing much to tell piezo foam what to do. And lastly, let's look for FV options since it's here. Now, what's this? Uh, this thing it says there's a porosity, right? It's porosity. Um, yeah, there's, there is a porosity uh, file because this is, after all, a case dealing with uh, flowing the porous media. So, um, since that's the case, that that would uh, we will expect that you need an entry to tell OpenFOAM that it is a porous media. 
but this is not really an apples to apples comparison between let's say the cavity flow because there's no porous media here and this lamina piezofoam uh, piezofoam so um, does piezofoam always need these uh, FV options well, let's go and take a look in some other folder okay so we can take a look at the RAS is the Reynolds one and let's look at the turbulent version of the cavity file so let's go to constant we'll see two files there only it says transport properties and turbulence properties so in fact here we don't have an FV options which uh, helps us to specify uh, you know what porous media the nature of the porous media that this particular tutorial file called the laminar porous blockage is talking about so now we have established that uh, piezofoam does not always need this uh, FV options in the constant if it's not talking about porous media right so let's navigate back to laminar and then the porous blockage and then we'll look for uh, other files so we have done with the we are done with the zero file we're done with the constant file we want to look at the system file now right so let's see system all right well, again let's uh, let's take a look at the other system file and we'll compare the similarities and differences in the entries so firstly we notice the very common ones block mesh dict yes we have this control dict yes we have FV schemes, yes we have, FV solution, yes we have. And now in this particular tutorial, we have a topo set dict. And it's a good thing we have already done, we have already done the snappy X mesh, uh, topo set dict, uh, all these other, and create patch. So we know this is here because probably you want to select something, select some cells or faces. So it's not necessary that that piezo form needs uh, this topo set dict, all right? But just out of curiosity, let's go and see what's inside. So this is again, it talks about a cell set with a porous blockage. And yeah, we have a box to cell entry. So it's nothing to do with a uh, uh, piece of foam, right? Because uh, this is just uh, selecting a set of cells. And then, you know, you tell uh, open foam, you know, this is a new set. I want to change the way we deal with this set. Okay. so. Nothing too fancy there. You can look at the block mesh dict and see if anything different. Okay, I'm pretty sure there's uh, some block mesh dict we've already done before. So you see the block mesh is pretty much the same. There's no too much, not too much of a difference here. Okay, so that's how they make the mesh. Let's look at control dict now. It says that the application is piezo foam. It's not a kind of a trivial difference because if you start running a uh, piece of foam using your run file uh, then it's not really much of a if you explici uh, explicitly explicitly specify piece of foam in your run file then there's there's nothing nothing too wrong with it okay so uh, we have a start time and then you have an end time all the usual stuff okay run modifiable true and we'll take a look at the control dict see it's pretty much the same same stuff Right control, right interval, you just have different entries because these are two different cases. So pretty much control dict and block mesh dict are the same. Of course you want to name your application differently, by all means go ahead. But the, the thing is that you don't have to worry too much. Now let's look at the FV schemes file. Okay, VR FV schemes. Alright, so we have the same DDT streams here, okay, in the piece of foam on the left and echo foam on the right. Gradient schemes, it says default Gauss linear, and this is also a Gauss linear. However, echo foam has this other entry here. And we look at this thing, uh, this uh, divergent schemes, right? Divergent schemes here. It says uh, default none, and then it says Gauss linear. LUSD gradient of U, that's the divergence phi U thing. So it's a slightly different solver. But we need this extra entry here, you see? Divergence of new effective times blah 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 blah. That should be Gauss linear. So this entry is again missing in the ICO form. We will need to uh, add this in into uh, our uh, F, uh, FV 
schemes directory in order to have the uh, piece of form start working. So that's very similar to potential form where we need to add a few extra entries here and there to tell the solver what to do. Interpolation scheme about the same and uh, this SN gradient schemes is just it just says uncorrected here. Here it says orthogonal. Well, that one we won't bother much about it. Um, what these entries are, but we know that for piece of form to work, we at least need this this entry over here. Okay, so we'll make a mental note of that, and then uh, we can move forward. So, just to recap what we have done so far, we are just comparing the differences and similarities between the icon file and the piece of form file. Well, with the laminar flow. So you saw that the transport uh, properties are different. We have a slightly different file in the constant. And then we have the turbulence uh, properties as well. Yep. So we this, these two files are essential. So we'll need to, you know, check back for comparison. Okay. And then uh, we saw the system file. And we saw that uh, every scheme was slightly different. There's a line of code we need to add in. So we'll make a mental note of that. So most of the things are in the constant and system file, right? So uh, let's take a look at every solution and let's compare it with the icofoam uh, every solution. All right, so let's take a look line by line. First, this one. It says P, okay, pressure, uh, no, the, the entries are slightly different, you see? The P solvers are slightly different. Okay, they are written slightly differently, GAMG versus uh, PCG here. So again, the solvers are different. We all need to take a look at that. Now, P final, okay, P final, this is the next entry. Um, the next entry is this, so it talks about a some pressure here. Maybe it means that okay, I'm copy and pasting all of this in. So the first entry, uh, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. I've got to go and double check this, but uh, yeah, it's probably some C plus plus kind of language thing. So yeah, I have to double check what that means. But anyway, yeah. Uh, rest of the things, the tolerance and the relative tol uh, tolerance is the only extra uh, entry in here. So the extra input we need. Okay. And then in piezo form, you see that uh, this uh, extra entry is put here. It says U, K, Epsilon, Omega, R, Nu tilde. Okay, so you can't just have U, you need to have all these entries in so that piece of home can start running. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, otherwise it's all pretty much the same. So the smooth solver is called smooth solver and the smoother is called Gaussido. It's a slightly different for both. Tolerance and relative tolerance are pretty much the same. And of course, look you look at this one, the, the piezo and correct the piezo entry is about the same as well. So I think most of what we need to look at is in the solvers entry, especially this, this is especially important. Uh, as to what they are doing, we can talk about that. But first, we want to get it to start working. Okay. So um, in the next video, we we'll want to pot, pot over some of these changes. Uh, we, of course, we we'll want to run a test of this uh, piezo form first. But uh, we'll port the changes over, and we'll uh, see what happens with our pipe, uh, with our pipe, uh, snappy hex mesh pipe, uh, kind of a case. Okay. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.